know this. Something is happening in Anaheim, California, despite a complete blackout from the corporate mainstream media. Take a look at some of these pictures by award-winning investigative journalist Amber Lyons from Anaheim over this last weekend. When we hear terms like militarized police, this is kind of what comes to mind. Officers decked out in full military gear as though they're about to be deployed to Afghanistan. So what's behind this? Why are militarized police on patrol in Anaheim? Well, Sunday marked the ninth straight day the local citizens took to the streets to protest police brutality. It's been nine days since police shot an unarmed man, 25-year-old Manuel Diaz, in the back of the head, killing him. And since that shooting, the streets of Anaheim have been the scene of mostly peaceful protests that have at times turned violent in response to heavy-handed police crackdowns. Last week, this, for example, was the scene in Anaheim as police in riot gear fi fired projectiles like beanbags and pepper balls indiscriminately into crowds of people. 24 people were arrested that night. Storefront windows were smashed and fires were started. And last night, as hundreds poured into the streets for a peaceful march and ceremony for Manuel Diaz, they were once again met with the Anaheim police, equipped with full military gear. Nine people were arrested on Sunday. For the latest out of Anaheim, here's Amber Lyon, award-winning investigative journalist and filmmaker. Amber, welcome to the program. Hi, thank you very much for having me on. Pleasure thank to be here. Thanks for joining us. Based on your reporting, the streets of Anaheim look like scenes from another country. How are the citizens there dealing with it? Well, I, I think overall, yesterday there were a lot of outside protesters who came in uh, to protest. But earlier in the week, we saw uh, a lot of anger on the streets from citizens who actually live in Anaheim about this officer-involved shooting. There's definitely a disconnect you feel out there between the residents and police force. Uh, the majority of Anaheim, if you know anything about the demographics here, is uh, of Hispanic population, whereas the majority of the police force uh, are, are Caucasian. So there, there is a little bit of a, of a disconnect there. How has the situation evolved over the last nine days from the shooting of Manuel Diaz to yesterday's show of force? Well, yesterday, uh, like I was saying earlier, there were a lot of uh, outside protesters from different areas. But uh, toward the end of the night, things really calmed down. And that's when we saw a less of a police presence on the street. We pulled up to a candlelight vigil for Manuel Diaz in his neighborhood. And the locals took over, saying that they'll, they don't need the police to show up. They'll take care of it. They'll run traffic control and make sure that everyone's safe. And, and even as a journalist, when you got out of your car, this was the first time we've been covering this for about a week, that we got out of our car and we didn't see a police presence, you really felt uh, more, there was more uh, tranquility in the air and it was a lot more, more peaceful because you didn't have that agitation of seeing uh, officers in, in full military SWAT standing out in lines blocking off the streets. We had uh, Tim, Tim Poole, who you've been working with in Anaheim, on the program last week, and he described the city as a powder keg. Is, is that volatile mood still lingering? A little bit. You find you find definitely pockets of of that anger in this area, which could be po potentially exacerbated if there is another officer involved shooting. Uh, we were out on the streets, uh, Tim Poole and I, on Tuesday night, and that's when we ended up getting caught in the line of fire, just walking down a regular busy street. Police started firing white riot control weapons, and some of those weapons also, where we were almost hit, they also almost hit or did hit pedestrians and so you can imagine they are now holding more anger or more frustration with police as well so so if something were to happen and another spark we could see uh, more riots in Anaheim but last night when everything ended it was it was very much a, a, a calm mood on the streets Tom would you would you say Amber that the, the that the which, which is the chicken and which is the egg here? A lousy metaphor, I suppose. But is, it, mm. is, the, is the excessive police presence producing a reaction from the people or is it the reaction of the pe people to the initial police presence and an escalating reaction causing a greater police presence? 
Well, uh, I, I would say that the police presence, just from what we noticed, because we had uh, two protests we attended yesterday back to back. One was where the protesters were trying to march to Disneyland. And on the way there, they were met with officers on horseback who had sticks in their hands. They were also met with uh, uh, officers in full military camo SWAT gear riding on the backs of trucks, about a dozen per truck, heading to block the road leading to Disneyland. So that definitely heightened tensions just seeing the, that many uh, officers and, and, and those weapons as well. So, so we left that protest that got uh, quite a bit tense. And then we went to the candlelight vigil later that night. And that's when the citizens were allowed to police their own protest. And, um, and, and that was just a calm, happy, uh, tranquil feeling. So it, it was almost like black and white between when there was a police presence and, and when there wasn't in this area, Tom. Remarkable. Amber Lyon, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Hey, thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Sure.